Hey there, this is Jonathan Muller with the JP Muller Group. And today I'm gonna tackle a question that I've heard a lot. Uh, can I auto-populate a cell with a value? And uh, then you could you know, override it with whatever you wanna type. And if you um, delete whatever you entered as an override value, then the original autofill value comes back. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. In this example, I'm gonna use a concept of an invoice where I could select from products in a price list It'll automatically fill out the manufacturer standard or a suggested retail price, and then I'll be able to adjust that. Okay, and you'll see that in columns A and B, I have our product list and our prices, our MSRP prices. Normally, I'd have this in a different tab. For the ease of display here in this video, I put it in the same tab. And in the right section, I have the actual invoice. And you'll see that I use data validation to look from column A and give you your choices. So here I could choose widget, maybe I'll choose, you know, board, another board, you know, vent, etc. and nails. Now, I could put quantities in here, two, three, four, six, ten, whatever. Notice it didn't calculate yet because the calculation is based on unit cost. The reason why I pull MSRP in here is because later on I may want to show you a discount, like how much you got off, and you can visually see the MSRP cost and then what you paid, right? So unit cost, now I could very simply make this, you know, E, let's say three, just copy over, right? And I could fill those down, right? Well, that's great. That works, the calculation's correct. And even if I override it like eight, you know, dollars, and it'll be eight times two equals 16. Well, that's fine. But as soon as I delete eight, because I decided, well, maybe I made a mistake and you shouldn't get that discount, then I'm back to blank. It didn't pull in the 1099 yet. I would have to go, well, okay, equals that. Well, I don't want to have to do that. And in other examples, although this one's simple, you may have more complex examples where you don't have to think about it. You want to just be able to enter a value where it pulls in the other value. So how do we do that? Before I go there, I'm going to go over here and show you a concept. There's a thing called uh, arrays. If I use the equal sign, and instead of saying, you know, uh, E3 like we did, I say equal, um, let's say I want to put braces here, and I want to put the value of John and Larry, right? So what this is going to do, the syntax is within the braces, it's going to start with this cell and put the first value here. Then it's going to put in the second cell, cell over the second value, right? And I could add more. I could put Lucy, etc. And it'll keep going and going and going. Why is this important? Um, let's talk about how functions work when you take up space that it's trying to populate. So let's say I go here where Larry is and I enter my own value, whatever it is. Let's see what it does to the function. It causes the function to fail, which means my overriding of the cell by actually entering a value in a cell causes the function to fail. So mine takes precedence, and that's important. I'm about to show you why. Let's go and enter a column that'll be hidden to the left of the unit cost. We'll call it hidden. And we're going to put in braces here. We're going to put blank because I don't care what comes back in this one cell. I don't care what comes back in F because it's going to be hidden anyway. And if what I wanted to put in column G is the MSRP or E3. Okay, you see? And I'm going to copy this down. Great. So now what it's doing is it's taking whatever's in E3 and it's forcing it into column G. Okay? Whatever's in column E is being forced into column G. But I could override it and I'll cause, you'll see, this function to fail. But who cares? I'm not going to show you this column. So I'm going to hide this. And now you can see that the total cost is $16, which is eight times two. Let's say I made a mistake and I wanted to delete that. Notice 1099 came right back. I didn't have to change any formulas or anything. It automatically got populated because of the function that's hidden in the column F. I could take this a step further um, and do things like this. Let's do conditional formatting. Let's say, we'll go down to formula. And we'll say, if 
uh, I wanted to execute this formula if E3 is not equal to G3. And I will make the background blank and I'll make it blue. So I want to highlight in blue and bold anything that I override with. So now I change this to eight, becomes blue. Charge it, changes to 10, becomes blue. If I revert it back, it reverts back to. And if you notice while I'm doing this, the extended costs are changing and so is the total. So there you have it. That's a neat little way with no code to force the auto population of values in cells. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please comment or reach out to me. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.